Is something wrong? Sounds like someone's in trouble. It's Jax. You heard some rumor about Tanakh the loitering around where they're not supposed to be. Took off south for Stone's Echo the next day to find them. Damn fool. Who is this Jax, exactly? My friend. Ain't it obvious? Bit younger than me, can still move without every bone creaking. <laughs> Knows his way around a bow, too. Good company to share a drink with. When there's sweet sap to drink anyway. But I told him, stick your hand in bramble and you're bound to catch a fist of thorns. Maybe I should find this guy. Stone's Echo, he said? That's right. Uh, if you don't mind me, these roots aren't gonna dig themselves. It's not like I don't have, you know, four months or something to save the planet Earth, and you know it's very work time. It's very something. Okay, I'm over. I just forgot everything I'm talking about.
to the grand cycle, become seeds, but I'm not ready yet. You are an exceptional one, aren't you? I can tell. Forgive me, I have matters to tend to. May the wind carry you. to say that we are united, but famine brings out the worst of us. <clears throat> Good, you're among us again. You're so's friend, right? Just woke up, didn't you? I'd find you a bit <laughs> You must be Aloy. Please, sit. You want to talk to me? I hear there's a group of Tanakh holed up near Stone's Echo. No one knows why they're there. One of our veterans wants to seek them out, learn what they're doing out here. Tanakh, the Nutaru territory. That doesn't sound good. I do not know you. Have you come to gawk at a withering tribe?
One more search. Let this go, Bree. There is nothing to be done. The river will carry her seeds. We can't give out. If we just enough. What's going on here? You're the one who spoke before the chorus. Maybe you can help. This is not your concern, Outlander. Have we not tolerated enough of your intrusions? I think you can handle one more. What is it? My wife, Kalai. She was to join the course. She went up to the promontory to perform the rite of discovery, but she must have fallen. And now they are abandoning the search. We have done enough, Bree. The search party found nothing but her instrument broken beside the riverbed. And atop the promontory was only the dye she used for the ritual. We will not ask more of our people to risk their lives because of one woman's stubbornness. But the seed she carried deserved to be planted and remembered. I heard how you helped the land god, Ray. How you saw what no one else could. Please, will you look for her seed pouch? False hope is a creeping vine. How was Kalai chosen to join the chorus? The chorus chooses its own, but they can't do so in isolation. They must listen to the people. Kalai was a growing voice for new ideas instead of old traditions, and her beliefs were catching on. We cannot deafen ourselves to dissonance, unpleasant though it might be. So you had to admit Kalai, or risk legitimizing her ideas even more. The Outlander catches on quick. The Rite of Discovery. What is it exactly? It's a pilgrimage to the Promontory. The place where the first Dutaro beheld Plainsome. Kalai was to follow the path our ancestors took. Mark her eyes with dye and then play her song while overlooking the land. She then would have added her mark on the Promontory itself, joining the marks of those who came before. Every new Chorus member used to make the journey. But because of the derangement, the practice has been abandoned. Too dangerous. No one's done it for years. Then why did she do it? We all urged her not to. But, as was her way, she ignored our warnings. She thought it would lend strength to her point of view. She needed to prove that she respected the old ways, even as she advocated against them. Then maybe more people would listen. What were Kalai's political beliefs? Radical. You would have gotten along. Plain song is dying. But Kalai believed we don't have to die with it. As the wind carries the seed to distant lands. She proposed that the Utara leave Plain Song and seek out a new home. We are bound to this land. A tree cannot pick up its roots, even as fire approaches. But you're not trees. It doesn't matter now. Kalai was carrying a pouch of seeds? Every Utara keeps one. We choose the seeds at a young age, taken from the plants of our forebears or those of other significance. And when one passes, their seeds are returned to the land that nourished them, so that life may spring again. Which is why I want Kalai's pouch. Her seeds deserve to be planted in plain song. The river will carry the seeds to new soil, where they will take root and flower. But they won't be at home. It's the best we can hope for. If I'm out that way, I can take a look around. Thank you. The promontory is northeast of here. Look for the broken bridge at the bottom of the cliffs, right at the promontory's base. That's where the search party found her instrument. Okay. That all right with you? How you waste your time is not my concern. Searching for what the land has already reclaimed is fruitless. No time to be wasteful with your energy.
You return. What do you need, Aloy? I need to be going. Please, let me know if you find Kali's seed pouch. Yes? I have to go. I'll wait here for you. Aloy! I'll be going. Good luck. Dress for protection. What's going on here? Sounds like there's a problem. We're speaking about something important, Outlander. You'll, please, later. A reminder of why I often prefer plants to people. They're so much less demanding. I apologize for y'all. My people used to be friendlier, but hunger robs many of their kindness. Seems like there's a lot around here in short supply. Is there anything that can help? As Yul said, we need food. So much so that we've sent hunting parties to the old growth, a forest in the north. We never used to hunt animals for food. We never had to. But as our crops fail, we've run out of options. But something else went wrong. A machine slaughtered the last hunting party we sent out. A Klostrider. But to hear the lone survivor tell it, more deadly than any we've seen before. Until it's gone, I can't risk more hunters, but without that meat, our people grow more lean every day. I saw you up there when I spoke in front of the chorus. Yes. I'm sorry I couldn't do more to help you, and especially Zoe. Many Utaru like to think we're above politics, but that is far from true. I don't often agree with Fane, but I have to work closely with him on many matters. So you didn't want to cross him? Not in such a public way, no. I hope you don't hold it against me. What's done is done. It all turned out in the end. Without more food, how much longer can the tribe hold out? The land gods blight the fields more every day. A month? Maybe two? The maddening part is that many are resigned to this fate. Like Fane, who would have us simply wait to die. You heard him. Death is merely part of the grand cycle. But you'd rather do something. Yes, like send hunters to the old growth for food. Fane fought that idea too. He will undoubtedly cast what happened to the hunting party as another reason to side with him. If we let him. Tell me everything you know about the machine that attacked your hunters. 
It fell upon them near the edge of the old growth. One of them, Ven, survived and made it back to Plainsong. If you wish to question him, he's recovering with our healers. The other four hunters weren't so fortunate. It must be a powerful beast. Can you destroy it? I've handled tough ones before. Good. The old growth must be made safe for hunting. One more thing. Every Utaru wears a small patch of seeds, given at birth, planted at death. It is how we remember our loved ones and celebrate their place in the cycle. It would mean a great deal to the hunter's families if you could recover them. I'll do what I can. I know you will. Be careful in the forest. Before I head for the old growth, I might want to talk to the survivor. See what he can tell me about the Clostrider. There's the survivor from the hunting party. May you walk in the fields of plenty. Then? I'm here about the machine in the old growth. You're going after that horror. I'm going to try. Do you mind answering a couple of questions about it? I'll... I'll tell you what I can. Tell me what happened, step by step. There were five of us, hunting for boar to help feed the tribe, just like we had done half a dozen times before. Some machines got in our way. Happens every time we go to the old growth. Like always, we cleared them out. But this time, when we were done, we heard this roar. Hey, easy. I saw a flash from the trees, all claws and tail. It ripped right through Cole and Re and Zan. Came right at me, slashed my shoulder. There was blood. Then an arrow slammed into its neck. My friend Lau, he distracted it, yelled and whooped it. It turned on him. He disappeared into the trees, and it followed him. Last thing I heard him yell was for me to run. So I did. I was halfway back to playing song before I realized what I had done. Left loud to die. Is there anything you can tell me about the machine that might help? It looked like a claw strider, but it was stronger. Much stronger. Anything else? Its armor was darker and it had a strange purple glow. Thanks. I think I know what I'm dealing with. I need to get going. You don't want to fight that thing. Trust me. I know what I'm doing. Well, if you do, I hope you cut it to shreds. It killed Lao, my oldest friend. Was there more you wanted to know? Time for me to go. Watch yourself. Did you... I have to go. Okay. Outlander. What else do you need? I need to head... All right. <laughs> 